Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. It's a good day to be in the presence of Yah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a good day to be in the presence. I'm, I'm so thankful. Every time I wake up, I am very thankful, especially when Shabbat rolls around, yes. because this is the time that we get the feast. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? That yes. feast. Yes. Yeah, we get to sit down and we get to eat some meat this morning. Mm -hmm. How about that? We're going to eat the meat of the scriptures this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> the meat of the scriptures. Aren't you tired of milk? Yes. <laughs> I get a little tired of milk from time to time, so we're going to eat a little meat here. Okay? Yes. And we're going to get to the bottom of some very important issues here. Today's lesson is going to be titled, Are We Destroying Our Children? And I know that's a very catchy title. I hope it got your attention out there. You know, um, let me go to the, are there anyone that showed up yet? Yes. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Just trying to make sure. Mm -hmm. I gotta mute this here. Okay, we're gonna get started here. First of all, we're gonna have prayer. And then we're going to have Sophia read a scripture for us, okay? And then we're going to have our meditation. Okay, let's pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yah is good. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, right now I want everyone to really focus in their minds, okay, on the things that we pray about. Hallelujah. Really focus. Try to shut out everything around you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father Yah, in the name of your son, we come before you. Hallelujah. Your son, Yehoshua, the Hamashiach, we come before you asking you to bless us this day, Father. We need a blessing, Father. We need you to do something for us this day, Father. Give us understanding. Give us knowledge. Give us wisdom, Father Yah. We need some meat this morning, Father Yah. We pray, Father that you bless us and give us something, Father, that will sustain us for the rest of, of the next few days, Father, something that we can chew on, Hallelujah. something that we can meditate on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, Yah, we pray unto you right now, Father, because we need you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, we come before you humble because we know, Father, that of our own selves, we can do nothing. nothing. But through you, we can do all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we come before you, Father, to lift up our hands, hallelujah, hallelujah. and praise you, Father, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. and give thanks unto hallelujah. you, hallelujah. hallelujah, for everything that you've done, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 for the good and hallelujah. for the bad, hallelujah. hallelujah. We thank you, Father, in spite of Father, yeah, because we know all hallelujah. things work hallelujah. together for our good, hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Therefore, Father, we're going to walk up right before you. We're going to walk in righteousness Hallelujah. before you, Father. Hallelujah. We're going to walk in your spirit. Hallelujah. We're going to be led of your spirit. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to be filled of your spirit. Hallelujah, Father. Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, yeah, your word say in him we live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In him we move. In him we have our being. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Father, for this life, Father. For, Father, we know that we have been we have been baptized in the likeness of your death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And therefore, we shall be in the likeness of your resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You rose with power. Hallelujah. Therefore, you said in your word that when the Ruach has come, ye shall have power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So right now, Father, we come before you, Father. All of us as one big family, Father. Yeah. Those that are listening right now to this broadcast and those that are here in this home, we come together right now, Father. Hallelujah. You said when two or more are gathered that you are in the midst. And since you are in the midst right now, Father, Hallelujah. we want the power of your Ruach to come right now. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Father. Hallelujah. Let them feel your Ruach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You know, I just thank the Most High. I just thank him so much for all the things that he's done, you know. And from week in to week out, you know, 
Sabbath to Sabbath out. <laughs> From day in to day out, he is good. I can testify of it that he is good, you know, and he is worthy to be for, to be praised. So if you scripture. Psalms chapter 135, verse 1 through 3. Hallelujah, praise the name of Yah. Praise you servants of Yah who are standing in the house of Yahweh, in the courts of the house of our Elohim. Hallelujah, for Yah is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah is good. Hallelujah. <laughs> He is good. We we'll thank the Most High for that word. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to have our meditation. Now, you know what we do. Okay, most of you that have been here, that have listened to us before, you know that we meditate. Not to make it so, it's already a fact. These things are already facts in your life. It's just a matter of time before you start to believe them, that you start to see the manifestation of these things. Hallelujah. So we're going to meditate in the word. Hallelujah. We're going to meditate and we're going to believe what the word is saying to us. Hallelujah. We're going to believe. So let's meditate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. No weapon, no, no no weapon that is formed against us that is formed against us shall prosper. Shall prosper. And every tongue, and every tongue that rise against us rise against in us. judgment, in judgment Yah shall, shall condemn. I can do all things. I can do all things through the Mashiach. Through the Mashiach that strengthens us. That strengthens us. We have the victory. We have the victory. Greater is He. Greater is He that is in us. That is in us than He that is in the world. We are more than conquerors through Yehoshua. If Yah be for us, who can be against us? We are victorious. We have the victory. We are healed by Yehoshua's stripes. We are healed. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling. No sickness. No demon. No pestilence. No weakness. Let the weak say I'm strong. I am strong. I am, I am strong. I am strong. I am fearless in Yah. I am fearless in Yah. I am strong. I am strong. And very courageous. And very courageous. Hallelujah. 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 Let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the meditations of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable in thy sight. Oh God. Oh yeah. My strength. My strength. My redeemer. My redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be it. So be it. <laughs> Let it be so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now we're going to go right into the lesson here. This is a very interesting lesson. Um, you know, are we destroying our children? Is um, Someone wants to know, what was the first verse that Sophia read? Sophia, what was the verse that you read? Do you still have it? It was Psalms 135. It was Psalms 135. Now, this this is very interesting, this, this um lesson here. And I'm gonna tell you something. When you think about things, you let's look at today's generation, right? That we see. When we look at today's generation, you go back 10 years, and then you look at that generation, and you go back 10 years from then. And you look at that generation, you go back 10 years from then, what are you seeing? What's going on with the youth? More and more rebellious. Yeah. More and more lawless and uh, more and more um, against the family order. That's right. Why is that? What's going on here? There's a number of influences. A number. Yeah, a number of influences too. And, and but the main part of it is it comes from the parents. I'm going to tell you what I mean by it comes from the parents, okay? Because the parents are in control of what happens to these to the, to the youth. You are in control of what happens to your own children, okay? But what happens is a lot of times we relinquish that, we relinquish that control to others. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you where I'm going with this. We're going to read a couple of scriptures here, 
but I want you to understand what I'm talking about here, okay? Because I listen to a lot of brothers sometimes, a lot of brothers say that it's the women's fault that, are, that are the reason why a lot of these kids are being raised this way, okay? Well, a lot of these kids are being raised without father and home. So where's the dad, mm -hmm. okay? The problem is there's no dad in the home. That's the real issue here. There's no dad in the home. So when you don't have a dad in the home and all you have is mommy in the home, that's going to, that's, that's already, you already one problem, the dad not being there. Then you have a mother that's struggling, working jobs and trying to raise a child. That's another problem. Mm -hmm. So instead of just putting it on the women, it's actually on both. It's on the men, men are you the head of the house, you're the head of this whole thing. So you, since you're the head, it falls on you, okay? Then it goes down to the wife. Then it goes down to wherever else it may fall, you know, mm -hmm. upon the children, okay? It's kind of like a snowball effect, okay? Just trying to keep it real, keep this thing in order yes. because we keep getting it out of order because of our own pride or whatever. You know how men are. We stubborn. We don't want to admit when, when things um, actually start from us as the man, okay? So now, I'll go ahead. I wanted to uh, make mention of a, a big, uh, I'm sorry, a comment that a brother had been leaving. He has been dialoguing uh -huh. with um, a sister on uh, one of our videos. And um, he had made mention that he don't see any videos of women, um, so-called black women talking to their, uh, or making videos about their sons and how to raise their sons. <laughs> and um, as you have stated, the responsibility for raising sons it should fall on the dad. That's right. It's right. the responsibility of both parents. Yes, yes. That's right. But again, we see the shifting of the blame um, of raising our sons. That's right. And the problems that go along with that, we see the full and total blame being put only on the mother. That's when right. no one is saying that the mother is guiltless. What That's we're right. saying is that everybody should take their responsibility. That's right. From the from the head to from to the toe. That's right. The man and the woman should take their responsibility in how the children are raised. That's right. That's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to get to the bottom of this thing. I'm going to show you what's going on here because it's quite spiritual. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because some of the things of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Remember when we talked about the last time about foreshadows, shadows, and types. Okay, everything in the Old Testament is spiritual. Trust me on it. And if you don't see the spiritual aspect of it, it's because it needs to be revealed. You just can't go there and read the scriptures and think you're going to see these mysteries. Okay, the Ruach have to reveal these things to you. Now, I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Jeremiah, and we're going to look at chapter 32 here. So Jeremiah chapter 32. Uh, and this is verse 26 through 35. And I'm going to let um, um, Deborah, I'm going to let you um, read it. Oh, Seifer, where is Jeremiah? <laughs> I got it. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. That Seifer Bible was a little different. <laughs> okay, so we're going to Chapter 32, verse 26 through 35. Okay. Then came the word of Yahuwah unto El Yermayahu, saying, Behold, I am Yahuwah, the Elohim of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, Behold, I will give blank in the city into the hand of the Kadassim, and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babel, and he shall take it, and the Kadassim that fight against this city shall come and set fire on blank this city and burn it blank with the houses. What does your Bible say? Well, I'll give you that in a moment. Okay. I was trying to get to that. Okay, because the Seifer Bible has, uh, it has uh, the Hebrew uh, text Hebrew for text whatever text that for is. Some, some of some of the words. Yes. So we'll go. There. That's Jeremiah chapter thirty-two. Yes. And this is, okay, what verse is the first one? Okay, we started at, uh, I believe I started at 28, was it? Uh, or 26, 26, yeah. 26. So that's verse 29 there. 28, 28. have the, the Hebrew text in it. Okay, it says, um, I will give blank the city. Uh, 
What verse is that? I will give this city. I will okay. give this city. <laughs> this, okay. Okay. I will give this city. Okay, just remove that completely in the King James. Yeah. Okay. I will give this city into the hand of the Kadium and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The Kadium is the Chaldeans. That's okay. for you all out there. You have a regular Bible. It's the Chaldeans. Okay. King of Babel, and he shall take it. And the Kadium that fight against this city shall come and set fire on this city and burn it with the houses upon whose roofs they have offered incense unto Baal and poured out drink offerings unto other Elohim to provoke me to anger. For the children of Israel and the children of Yehuda have only done evil before me from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, says Yehuda. Okay. Is that 35? Oh, 35. Okay. For this city has been to me as a provocation of mine anger and of my fury from the day that they built it even unto the uh, till this day that i should remove it be from before my face because of all the evil of the children of israel and of the children of yehuda which they have done to provoke me to anger they their kings their princes their priests and their prophets and the men of yehuda and the inhabitants of jerusalem and they have set unto, they have turned unto me the back and not the face, though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it, and built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom the cause of their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Yehuda to sin. Okay, now this is going to get deep here. I want you to listen to what this is talking about here. Now, the Mosiah said, okay, because of the sins of Israel and Judah, I'm going to let the Chaldeans come and they're gonna deliver, they're gonna bring y'all into captivity, okay? Because of your sins. Now we wanna know what particular sins was he talking about? Because if you keep reading here, we go further down here. He says, now listen to what he says here. He said, for this city have been to me a provocation of my anger and of my fury from the day that they built it, even to this day that I should remove it from before my face because all of the evil of the children of Israel and the children of Judah, huh, which they have done to provoke me to anger in their kings, listen carefully with their kings, the leaders, right? Their princes, right? This is the, the sons and daughters of the kings, okay? Their priests, their prophets even, you hear me? And the men of Judah, the men of Judah, Say the, women, say the, men. the men, listen to this, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem is what? Mm -hmm. Where is Jerusalem? It's our land. Jerusalem is the capital of Judah, Judea. You understand what's going on here? So this Judah also, yes. when it says Jerusalem, is referring to Judah also, okay? So now let's look at this, what it's talking about here, okay? What did they do? He said, they turned their back to me and not their face, mm -hmm. right? Now, he said, I was rising up early and teaching them and instructing them. He said, but instead, they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name. Now, what were they doing? They were causing their children to pass through the fire of Molech. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> That's the same thing that's going on today. And I'm going to do you the same thing, causing your children to pass through the fire of Molech. And guess what? And then you sit back over the years when the years get back. And then you wonder why you have such a child before you after this child and got older. Yes. And you're sitting there and you're looking, you're like, what happened? What happened? What do you mean? You don't know what happened? 
Uh, let me tell you something. The past of your family history is there. Yes. Okay. You can see what happened to your child over the past 16 years. The time your child gets 16, 18 years old, they are unruly fighting against you. If you go back and you look at that child's history and you look from year to year, I guarantee you can trace it and see where it started. And back then when it was going on, you ignored it. And see, that's what goes on. And I'm going to show you how subtle these things is because this fire muller thing is deep, is deep, you know? I wanted to interject a little bit too from that very early stage of life with our children. Yep. What happens, especially here in America. And I want to focus on America because we are in a culture that's not our own. When you look at other areas, like even in the Caribbean, some of the islands, they even they have a different reality than we have here in America. I talked to one sister about that. How she brought her daughter here to American schools, things just got terribly worse. Listen, when she was in in the islands, uh, the, the the child was learning very well, smart, and the the environment was different. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at this cultural um, aspect of things too. That's right. From the time our children are very young. And um, me and my husband, both as we were doing our study, the most I gave us both some allegories. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to deal with a lot of allegories today dealing with animals. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to get into them now, but I want to, I want to make a point of our children as a whole, we have been brainwashed yep. into thinking that we have to send our very young children out from us. Yeah. Okay. That's right. And I'm talking about the public food system. That's right. Okay. From the time they're very young, they send the little things in the mail saying we have these wonderful preschool programs that are going to do this, that, and the other. And we all think it's such a good idea. And for some of us, we use it as a form of babysitting. That's right. Okay. Um, we've been homeschooling our children for a long time. I remember a woman came to our gate, was it two years ago? Um, from one of the schools and she handed my little my Hannah a little business card and You know in my opinion, you should never talk to somebody's child outside That's one lesson that they teach in the public food system But yet and still they break their own rules when, when they're trying to recruit mm -hmm. So they hand my daughter this business card and at the same time they're telling her there's lots of fun games and they give treats and they have Fun and the kids get to play. She's telling my daughter all of these things. So my daughter comes in with her eyes all bright. <laughs> Mommy, this lady gave me this business card and she said they have fun things for kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is the lure. Fun things for kids and treats and snacks throughout the day. Right. So they lure them in at a very early age. And we as parents think it's a good idea because we forgot what the word said. That's right. The word said train them up in the way that they should go. That's right. Okay. I was talking to the children yesterday and I was tell them, telling them that there's a difference in schooling and educating. You see, That's right. schooling is when you are using a system or a format of a system to um, teach children how to take tests, how to become, how to become professional test takers. That's educating right. is a process. That's right. You know, you, it, it, with educating, sometimes you have to backtrack, don't you? You might forget something and then you have to backtrack. Mm -hmm. That's what education is. It's a process. But schooling, once you move on from a subject, it's rare that they visit that subject again, whether you get it or not. But see, the problem with us sending our children off to other people to teach them, they are learning things that we as parents wouldn't normally teach our children. You see, right. especially as it relates to biblical things. Now, when the Most High instructed parents to train up the children in the way that they should go, I don't believe that that was to send your children off to others to train them up. Because when you go to the, the system for training, as Malcolm X said one time, he says, only a fool would send their children That's to right. their enemy to be taught. That's right. So... From a very young age, young Hebrew children are being taught that they are Negroes, that they are black, That's right. that they are worthless, that your hair should not be the way it is, that um, you should try to look like us, you should try to sound like us, walk like us, talk like us, act like us. Right. So that is the very beginning of this brainwashing that 
causes our children to be sacrificed. Because as we go through this lesson, we're going to show you how the progression through the years, through this system that we've chosen as the educator of our children or the teacher of our children, you're going to see how all of that plays a very significant role in the downfall of our children. That's because right. as they grow, as they grow, they spend the majority of their day with people who do not fear Yah. That's right. And so they have the majority influence, whether we want to believe it or not. Right, exactly. They have the majority influence. The kids that they are around have an influence. If the teacher is a homosexual or lesbian, we're going to talk about that too, mm -hmm. because I know of some, we know of some situations where a group of young women who went into um, high school straight and they came out lesbian. That's right. So again, we are sacrificing our children to a system which is today's mullet. And it's not just the school system, it's other things in which we'll get into all of that as well. Okay, let's go to Leviticus chapter 20. And um, Aliyah, I'm gonna have you read it. Chapter 20, verse one through five. We're gonna see where this came from because um, um, when this, when it talks about them sacrificing their children or um, uh, causing the children to pass through the fire of Molech, uh, what happened in Jeremiah was actually something that the Most High forbid us to do in the book of Leviticus. So read Leviticus 1 through 5, chapter 21 through 5. And Yah spake unto Moses, saying unto the sons of Israel, Therefore thou shalt say, What man soever there be among the sons of Israel, or the sojourners that sojourn in Israel, that giveth his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. And the people of the land shall stone him with stones. I also will set my face against that man and will cut him off out from, midst, from the midst of the people because of his seed have he given unto Molech, seeing that he had made unclean my sanctuary, even to the extent of profaning my holy name. But if the people of the land do not hide their eyes from that man, when he give the seed to Molech, so as not to put him to death, then I will then will I myself set my face against that man and cut his family, and I will cut him off, and all that follow unchastely after him, and going oh, unchastely after him all that, out of the midst of the people. Okay. Deborah, I'm going to have you read it in this one. Is she going to read it from the sea for by? Okay. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Again, you shall say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be, of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel that gives any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones, and I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people, because he has given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from do any ways hide their eyes from the man which he gives of his seed unto Molech and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family, and will cut off cut him off and all that go whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. Now. <laughs> now this gets a little deep don't it mm -hmm. you see a lot of times we don't understand what we're doing here okay because we think that we, we you know there's a scripture that there's a way to seem of right mm -hmm. unto man but at the end is destruction okay mm -hmm. the problem is you're not looking at things in a realistic view okay according to the scriptures okay mm -hmm. now let's just look at things according to the scriptures here right mm -hmm. now according to the scriptures right if you are a child of Yah and you are raising your family according to the scriptures, according to righteousness and true holiness, and you are walking in that way, you are a righteous person, right? Now, what about the system? Hmm. What about this system out here? Is this system set apart? No. no. Are the teachers of this system set apart? No. Are the governors of this system set apart? No. Are any of the leaders of this system set apart, truly set apart? No. Maybe one or two, 
but for the most part, no. Okay? Now, is the system itself and what they're teaching righteous and set apart? No. Okay? Now, here you are set apart, but here you think that you can easily just send your kids out into the system and become a part of the system. One thing I want to say about what, that, too. Well, no wonder we see what's going on in the youth today. Think about that. No wonder we see the 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 problems that we're looking at in the youth today. Mm -hmm. And then we sit there and we and we look at it almost as if it's it's strange to us. Mm -hmm. You know, that's almost like and let me say this real quick. That's almost like um sending a cat to hang out with dogs next thing you know that, that cat come back barking and you're like, well, where you getting this barking from? Mm -hmm. Where do you think he's getting it from? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It kind of reminds me when we were in the Christian church, and this is the argument that we used to hear then. They would say, um, send your children to be a light yeah, to the other right. children. <laughs> you see? You hear that? Send, send your children yeah. so that they can be a light to the other children. Yes. The Most High never called us to send our children to try to evangelize other children. Yeah. Because and when you send work anyway you got well, like guess what some guess what guess what y'all light attracts bugs right check flies and everything else <laughs> yes. on it, right right it's like uh, but the thing it's like you look at how most kids are okay mm -hmm. you can't send a little 10 year old kid to oh he gonna be a light no 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 he ain't gonna be no light because his light gonna get put out by all that darkness that's right around him because he don't know how to handle come on, how to now. Handle come on that's now. right now I know some of you out there. You put your kids out there in the system, and you you did an excellent job. And some of you have done a really good job in, in teaching your kids and shielding your kids so that when they got out there, they were able to hold on to some things or whatever. That is that's a rarity. Saying. That's a rarity. Yeah, yes. exactly. That's a rarity. It's very few. Let me tell you something. I grew up in the in the public school system. Mm -hmm. Okay, and from junior high, who was bad? Junior mm -hmm. high was real bad. Little boys and lust running through their mind. They boys going out their mind. 10, 11, 12 years old, 13 years old, kids are doing, are, are into full blown activities, okay? Ain't no puppy love going on, you know? It's like the Brandon real it, it, full blown rock, rock well and love. Yeah, exactly. It's some bad stuff going on, right? So, and then, then when I got to high school, man. Yes. High school was incredibly ridiculous to, to send a kid into public schools in high school. Let me tell you something. Everything from sex to homosexuality to drugs to stealing, killing, you name it. Everything was going on in my school. And I'm talking about I graduated in 1981. You get what I'm talking about here. Mm -hmm. And you know what's amazing, too? The scripture tells us to put on the whole armor of Yahweh. Yes. But we're sending our children who don't even have the armor all the way on. You see, <laughs> yeah, it used exactly. to be a day and time where preschool was an age of innocence. Yeah. That's not the case anymore. No, Haven't you all been looking around? Yeah. You have three and four year old children doing something. Wow. crazy no. things yeah. like my son said cussing but guess what it ain't even cussing just cussing anymore there are little bitty children who know um different things about sex that some grown-ups don't know you see yep. and i remember when we lived back in michigan and my oldest daughter was on the school bus that's right and um they sent a note home that some older children see that that's a problem listen too. to this she was in was she in the first grade Yes, he's in first or second grade, yep. But they were going to school, riding the same bus with um, big junior high kids, too, because they were going to the same general area. So everybody rode the bus together. So you have little six- and seven-year-olds riding the bus with uh, 12- and 13-year-olds, you see? Yep. And the 12- and 13-year-olds have the minds of adults. And so there was some emulation going on on the bus between two of the older ki older kids. And so they send this note home to inform the parents. Okay, now the note, most people say, well, at least they told us, but the fact that my daughter <laughs> and all the other little children had to witness this, yeah, that shows that she was in the wrong environment and we put her there. We put her there. That's we right. put her there. 
in the wrong environment so that she can witness these things and hear these things. I remember um, when we start, first started realizing that public school, and at the time we didn't know anything about homeschool. Yeah. We first started realizing, man, public school is just not good for our kids. Yeah, they're picking up, bringing on all kinds of stuff on like demons, riding them home, you know? Picking up spirits in all kinds of ways. They come on with that stuff. Me and my wife will sit there and we say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Where did this come from? Where, where that is school? Everything was coming from the school. Other kids. Yes. That's right. And I remember we were Christians at the time. Yeah. So there were certain things that my daughter just didn't like because we were Christians. She didn't like to hear certain music. She didn't like to hear certain talk. And so I remember she came home telling us when they had, a, was it a talent day or something yeah. where they all had to bring their music. So she took her little Christian music to school. And all the other kids took their music. And she came back telling me, uh, Mommy, I didn't like all of that such and such music that they were playing yeah. and we we looked at each other we were like you know she doesn't like it but we she have to go and some kids was bringing up straight up rap you know straight up all crazy kinds music. it's just crazy stuff up in there you and know then she started getting the um taste for britney spears and christina aguilera yeah you and see? she started before you know it she was getting that she was um getting a taste for um uh, Usher and other stuff, you know. Things that she because, wouldn't dare listen to yeah, because, because she didn't have access to She it. didn't have access to this stuff. We didn't listen to the stuff at our home, you know. We didn't let her listen. We didn't watch videos and none of that stuff. But she was picking up that stuff from other students, mm -hmm. you see. So in sending our oldest our oldest children, um, Aliyah and Tierra both, you know, we took them out eventually and started homeschooling. But there was a major influence that had already taken hold of our oldest daughter, Tierra. That's right. You see, because we didn't know any better. But this is why um, I say that Christianity can sometimes be a snare because it don't tell us all the things that we need to know. That's right. You know, it doesn't tell us that we have to come out of Babylon and that Babylon is not a physical city that it's talking about any longer. That's right. It's not talking about the Middle East when it tells us to come out of Babylon. That's right. It's telling us to come out of this system. That's right. But when you train your children up in this system and then you can't figure out why things are going wrong over That's here right. and over there and, and they seem to be picking up spirits and attitudes and ways about them. Then you, you have to start look. looking around and see what you have done or what yeah. you ex exposed them to. Because yeah. you'll say, in my house, we just listen to beautiful music. We love each other. We do this. We talk to our children at home. But you got to remember, right. they get seven or eight hours worth of talk time with heathens and children who don't know you. Don't know you. That's right. Five days a week. Five days a week. Exactly. So, so get this here. Get this here. You are actually dedicating more time more time to those children being in front of four other people that that that's don't have any regard for y'all, huh? They are they're most of their life. Look at this. That's five days out of seven. Okay, man, that's like that's more than two thirds. You know what I'm saying? That's more than two thirds of the time that that child is before the wicked and learning from the wicked. Are you hearing what we say in here? I'm telling you, then we sit back and you look at all these things and pick and say, where are they getting it from? Where are they getting it? You don't know? Mm -hmm. It's obvious where they're getting this stuff from, right? Yeah. It's obvious. I've seen in one school, this one school, I'm telling you this, this thing, when I heard this out, it made me upset. This one teacher at this one school was, was um, uh, a lesbian. Right, mm -hmm. and before you knew it, what, what was she a, a, a gym teacher or something? What she? Yeah, she was a coach. She's a coach, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Before you knew it, a lot of the young girls in the school became oh, lesbians. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Because they got this big mannish woman hanging over them and pushing the spirit off on them. Before you knew it, they all picked up that spirit. Well, one thing, too, the grandmother told us what specifically happened to her grandchild. Yeah. She said that this woman would take the girls back to her farm. Listen to this. Not during school hours. She would say, oh, we're having a gathering at the farm. And she would take a bunch of these girls back to her farm. And only Yah knows <laughs> what happened back on this woman's farm. Yeah. You think about that. You see, so we so readily just turn our children over to Molech. Yeah. We turn our children over to demons and devils. That's right. I remember, um, and I, I shared this dream before, but one time the Most High gave me a dream, and he wanted me to share it with this congregation we were attending. But in the dream, the house was on fire. Yeah. 
and the parents were sitting out on the lawn yeah watching the house burn and said i hope those kids wake up <laughs> i hope they realize the house is on fire and come on out of there they didn't lift one finger to help them they didn't scream yell holler or anything they didn't make any attempts to go into the burning house to get the children they just sat there and watched it burn and uttered among themselves that i hope the children know that the house is on fire wow. and that the house is burning you see now that's what we see happening amongst the that's parents that's what's going today. on yeah a lot of the parents know that their children are picking up influences from other people from um, school administration from teachers from other students and we still send our yeah. children the scripture says train up a child in the way that they should go it didn't say send yep. your children to someone else to train them up in the way that they told should you go. to do it you see that's right i'm going to use one of our allegories because we we have we have quite a few but we and many of you may have seen this video there was a rabbit and i've never seen an aggressive rabbit in my life okay <laughs> someone posted this video on facebook but this rabbit she came back to her little nest and she saw that a snake had his body all curled up around her babies and she lost her mind that rabbit went crazy that rabbit went crazy on that big snake and she didn't stop when the snake slithered away what did she do she, she kept on thing. fighting him she attacked him until she got too tired to fight until they actually cut the video off she was still fighting until she ran him yeah. away you see because that rabbit was smart enough to know that that snake was an enemy yeah and so she said you ain't got no business up around my babies like you are that's right and so as the mother of these children of this little litter i'm going to fight you and protect my young that's right but today we see our children hanging out with snakes <laughs> We all the time. We left. Matter of fact, we sent them out the home. Uh, um, Mommy, Daddy, there are a couple of snakes and lizards out there, and a couple of scorpions and demons. Uh, can we go out and play? Sure, go right in. Try you to know? win them. Their souls are lost. Yeah. Just try to win them. Be a light. You them. know, one of the little demon kids stick his head in the door, all wild and everything, and you look at him and smile. Hi, <laughs> hey, little Timmy. We're gonna just be sitting right out you. there. Yeah, you know, just send your kids uh, right on out there. And too. then when your when your your child, when the little baby rabbit comes home and says, Mommy, the snake bit me. Yeah. Then you rushing the baby to the hospital that yeah. the heathen got to. Yeah. Well, he's gonna put some more venom in him. And guess what? See? It's too late then. You see, it's too late. You see, sometimes what we what we do is we it kind of reminds me of this. Here's another allegory, okay. I saw this video. I used to watch nature videos all the time. It was very relaxing. You can learn a lot from watching animals. I ain't no kids. You can learn a lot from them, right? Yes, you can. So we sit back watching this nature video. I was watching these buffaloes, right? Mm -hmm. These big old buffalo called them wildebeest. But they had all these wildebeest were like uh, these lions were trying to get a hold of some of them, right? So you know what these wildebeest did is trying to get a hold of the youth. These wildebeest put all the youth in the center and they formed a circle yes. with all of their horns pressing outward. Yes, and the children were at their butt part. That's right, in the center of the circle, that's yes. right. And so whenever a lion would come to them, the wildebeest would charge them. Like, oh, and they were like, and them lions couldn't do anything, right? Now, you look at what's going on in society today. Now, what do we do? Not only do we open up the, 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 the circle. area, the circle, but we'll tell the little little wildebeest babies, oh yeah, go ahead on out to this lion. Them. This lion is gonna okay. teach Be you, nice. he's gonna train you, he's gonna he's gonna teach you some things. And the lion says, you know what? I know if I just grab the baby and bite his head off and eat it right here in front of him, they ain't gonna send the rest of the kids. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna let them send the kid to me, right? And I'm gonna just nibble on them every day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so he the lion gets him to his little area, right? And he bites a chunk out of his leg, send him back home to mommy. When the kid come home, come home, and you don't even notice the wounds, right? And then before you know it, the, the wildebeest, he, each time he comes, he's taking another chunk off the point. And pretty soon, the, the little little baby wildebeest can't take it no more. And then the wildebeest come home all crazy, all wild, because he got half eaten up. And you sitting there like, what happened? 
What do you think happened? And what do you think? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it, that's what happened. So now all of a sudden, yeah, the was... kids think they have to be 12, 14, 16 years old, and now you can't control them. Mm -hmm. Well, why is that? Huh? And especially, and I, I got to go back here, yeah. especially for those of you who say, I raised them in the church. I raised them in the church. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you didn't. <laughs> so you didn't. You took them to church. Okay, but you did not raise them in the ways of the most high. Yeah. Okay, you know what? You did raise them in the church. That's part of the problem, too. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the problem, too. You the did raise them in the church. Them, yeah. And you raised them in school. The yeah. church and the school have been a part of a system of Babylon that you use to help raise them. When the most high said you are to raise them up in the That's way right. that they should go. That's right. So they go to school and they get indoctrinated with people telling them that they came out of a big bang, okay? And that it's okay to have two moms or two dads. It's okay for little Susie to love little Lucy. Yeah. Okay. Or it's okay for little Timmy to love little Bobby. Okay. You have a system <laughs> telling them that. But then they yeah. go to church and then they have the pastor who is saying, let little Bobby come to my office so I can teach him how to be a man. Yeah. You see, or let the youth pastor uh, teach the young woman how to be a young woman before her time. That's right. You got all kinds of madness around these children in the church That's and right. in the school, and you think that you're raising them up right. Okay. That's right. Now I'm going to throw another curveball at you. Mm -hmm. Your children, they grow up and they sound so articulate. Okay. Yeah. And then you send them off to college to try to gain some more knowledge. Okay. Yeah. And when they go off to college, they run into a bunch of atheists mm -hmm. who are trying to reshape their minds because you thought you raised them in the ways of the Most High by taking yeah. them to church. But this atheist is now telling them that you need to rethink this whole book. Did yeah. any of that ever happen? Yeah. They throw in one little monkey, one little um, um, element of doubt. Um, have you ever thought yeah. about uh, what really happened with Noah? Yeah. Does that even sound realistic? They just throw something in there, any little thing, yeah. to cause that child to think. And then before you know it, the, the child comes home with all these questions to you because the church didn't properly prepare them for the story of Noah. That's right. The church didn't properly prepare them for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and who they are. That's right. And so they come home with these questions that you're unprepared to answer because the church didn't teach them That's right. properly. And That's so right. the educational system, whether it's high school or um, regular school or college is now trying to indoctrinate them against this even further That's right. and you don't know what to do yep. because you didn't study to show yourself approved your pastor don't know what to do and so that child is left with a ball of confusion and then the next thing you know they are writing a dear oprah letter <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you all remember the dear oprah letter that this young black girl wrote and she made it into a song dear yeah. oprah where she was pretty much telling Oprah that her ch her parents were religious fanatics, yeah, Christian fanatics. And she was starting to question everything because now she's in college hanging around with a bunch of hippies who don't believe in the most high, you see? So this is why sometimes we think we're doing the right thing for our children. Yeah. There's a way that seems right unto man, but the yeah. end thereof are, is the ways of death and destruction. That's right. So we send our children off to college. And we think that we're doing a good service to them because we haven't prepared them spiritually. When they go to college, they're just going out of the fire into the flame. That's right. You know, there's a scripture here in First Timothy. Um, Sophie, I'm going to have you read it. The scripture's in First Timothy. And it's um, <clears throat> verse 5. I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 8. First Timothy chapter eight verse I'm sorry chapter five verse eight. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really uh, uh well we got to get our eyes open and realize what we're doing. You know, I'm gonna tell you a story real quickly while we wait on this to find the scripture. I remember my son years ago was um going to the public school system. You know, he was going in, in the fourth grade, and you were here in fourth grade, too. Fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what happened was um, we, um, I remember that 
I wanted time at home with the kids gone more than anything. I just wanted time at home. And I and, and this was during the time I had, well, you know, I wasn't working a job, I was doing my own business. And so I I love to have that peaceful time while the kids were gone. And so my incentive was you know, hey, let's, let's just send them to this public school here. These schools different than the ones up north. So if he can at least go down here to this school, then that's fine. You know, it's different. And so to make a long story short, we sent them there. And my argument was that I needed that time. My you argument know? was that <laughs> I yeah. wanted them to stay home and be taught here. Yeah, that's right. Because that was... I just didn't trust the public school system. That's right. And I was sitting there and I was like, I was like, honey, I said, well, I said, I need, I need this time. It's peaceful around the house when they go. You know, I need, I want that peaceful time. Let me tell you what happened. When this one incident happened with my son, and they had him literally just, he was just literally going through something. Mm -hmm. You know, I sat there and I thought about this one, the one incident. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. almost simultaneously within that, around that same time, we had saw this news footage of this boy that committed suicide. Yes. He committed suicide because he was too afraid to face his teacher. You hear me? Young, young color kid. Yes. That bothered me. That if that much stress was on that boy to the point that he just did not want to face that teacher and he killed himself. Yes. And that he, bothered me. He even told his parents, he said, I just don't want to go back. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to go back. And what did they do? Yep. They said, well, son, you have to. You have to, yeah. You and, have to go and yep. face all of this torment yeah they sent the boy back and you no know, they, they told me he had to go back and he couldn't do it he just went and killed himself so on that note i sat there and i thought about that boy and i saw the stress that was on my boy i mean the stress that was on him was incredible mm -hmm. it was in your face stress he was so stressed out. i saw i said you know what son i said don't worry about the school you don't have to go back there and you can see the joy came over his face and I said, and I said, wow, you know, I said, we're going to teach you here at home, you know, and he was so happy, you know, and I'm going to tell you something that alone was enough to make me say, I said, say, okay, it got to be something going on in these school systems because they're going to be putting that much stress on this boy like that, you know, but anyway, read that scripture, Sophia, listen to this scripture here. This chapter five, verse eight. Yeah. And if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the belief and is worse than an unbeliever. Okay. Now, and the King James says an infidel. Now, it says that if this person, if he don't provide, now what else? Now, we always think about provision. What's the first thing we think about? Food, Food and water and, and shelter, shelter, right? Mm -hmm. There's more to providing for a child than food, water, and shelter. That's right. You understand me? You suppose it says train up the child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's a necessity for a child. Yes. Huh? That's a provision for the child that you teach that child and you raise that child. You understand? Now it says if you don't. You are you are a denier of the faith. That's right. What faith? Because all let me tell you why this is so important. Because when you look in the scriptures, they didn't send their kids off to no one. Are you hearing me? You can't find it in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You know, right. if they did send them off to someone, they sent them off to someone that was among their own people. Yes. Okay. The Israelites didn't send their kids off to the Palestines. To, to the, uh, Philistines. the Philistines to be taught, okay? They didn't send them off to the uh, Amalekites to be taught. They did not do such a thing. They didn't send them to the Romans. Man, you get what I'm saying here? Yeah, exactly. Yes. You see, but this is something that has come about because we're in the land of our captivity and we feel like it's necessary mm -hmm. that we do this thing. But we better rethink this thing because the scripture says you're worse than an infidel. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And, and I know I know a lot of people sit there and they say, man, but this school thing is very hard. It's very hard to homeschool. No, it's not. Let me tell you something. And I want you to think about what I'm saying here, right? From, from kindergarten to 
um, fifth grade, mm -hmm. the math is basically what? Multiplication, division, by the time you get to fifth grade, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying here? Then you get to doing fractions and all that stuff. But up to the eighth grade, most of that stuff is very easy to teach. There are books on it, there's videos on it. You know what I'm saying? All the other stuff, basically, they can pick up from reading. Kids learn. Let me tell you something. One thing that we did with my son and my oldest daughter, we're doing this with all our kids, basically. But my oldest daughter used to read all the time. My son loves reading, reads all the time. Because of the reading, it actually um, taught them how to write. Isn't that amazing? Because they read so much, they learn how to write. And then they learn how to speak. Mm -hmm. Because of the reading, they learn how to pronounce their words. They learn a different definition of words because they were reading so much. Reading actually just think about think about this for a minute. When you look at all of the different curriculums, right? You get history. That's basically reading, right? You get um, psychology. That's basically reading, right? You get English. That's basically reading. Huh? Literature and all that's reading. Think about it. Spelling. That's reading. You get what I'm saying? Most of that stuff, if, if with a person, uh, let me let me ask you a question. Can a person do chemistry if he can't read? No. No. Can he do any science if he can't read? No. I like a point that this one person made. They said, you can't honestly believe that scientists learn how to be science scientists <laughs> in public school. Yeah. They said, you can't honestly believe that that's what that's they learn. Right. You see, you do little experiments in public school that really don't amount to anything. Yes, we dissected a cow's eye once before, but what did I really gain from that knowledge? Now, there's one aspect of science that a lot of schools don't even touch on. There is one school that uh, they had started in Detroit, but it has since been, um, I think it was vandalized oh, and shut man, down. I remember that. It made me upset when I heard this. Someone started the school for pregnant girls in Detroit, and many of you may know about it, where they were teaching them the science of agriculture. And they someone, went, and stuff, yeah, too, someone yeah. went in and slaughtered all of their livestock and ruined a lot of their vegetables right. and things. But why don't schools teach you that? Why are they teaching millions of children how to dissect a cow's tongue or eye? A or a frog. Leg. Why are they teaching them that? Why don't they teach them how to grow food? What is more important for the masses? You because, see? see, they want them dependent on the system. Mm -hmm. See, that's why they teach the things they do, because they want you dependent on the system. See, don't you understand what's going on here? See, I know a lot of, and a lot of you Caucasians out there, you may look at this video, some of you get a little upset because we talk about uh, us sending our kids off to the enemy, which have, for years have been the Caucasian, basically, to us, have been the enemy, okay? Mm -hmm. But what you got to understand is you send your kids out to them, too. And they dumb it down your kids too. That's right. You understand me? So you got to understand what this system does. It creates dummies. You understand me? That's what it does. It dumbs you down to the point. And you all sit there saying, well, wait a minute, I'm not dumb because I didn't get my, my high school diploma. And I'm not dumb because I got my uh, my master's degree and I got all that. Yes, you are. You're very dumb to the system. Oh, you fit right in with the system. Mm -hmm. You fit right in like a piece of puzzle. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? That's where they want you because they know that you will rise up if you didn't. You will see all this nonsense that's going on and you won't be dumb to but see they want you to be dumb to it mm -hmm. so that they can continue to pull the wool over your eyes while they continue to suck all the blood out of your soul yes that's right that's right this system has really gotten a lot of people so confused so confused that's right we go to the system we get a piece of paper that says that some man or woman or some system approves of me you see <laughs> they have told me that i did well yeah. When um, statistics are showing that a lot of young people are entering into college after 12 years of schooling, they're entering into college unable to read and they have to take remedial math classes all over again. Yeah. You see, now that tells me that there's something wrong with this system. Yeah. They allow them to use calculators. You can't learn math using calculators. Yeah, I'm some, sorry. some kids, some kids as high as in high school can't even multiply you hear what i'm saying because they got them using calculators now they can't even can't even divide can't do long division here they are in high school and we've had students here like they can't even do long division 
in high school and can't do long division? Mm -hmm. That's a fourth grade problem. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying here? So what we're trying to do is get you all to see that um, when you depend on outside sources mm -hmm. to um, educate your children, all they're doing is teaching them, teaching them how to take tests. Yep. Some of them may be able to pass the test, That's but right. ask them two weeks later about a specific test, okay? From time to time, we'll revisit a certain subject here that we've already visited before, okay? Because mm -hmm. I already know how the mind is working. Our minds don't always retain things yeah. the way they should. Yeah. So just because, well, we already went over state capitals before, don't mean that you don't have to go over them again. That's right. They might get half of them right, uh, say, a year later. That's right. Okay? Whereas when they first started studying it, they, should, they were probably getting, getting them all right. That's right. But sometimes you don't always retain things. So education is a process, That's okay? Right. We're not going to harp too much only on the education. What we're trying to show is that when you depend on others outside of your, your own family to educate you, you're yeah. not going to always get the things that you need. And therefore, when your children grow up and they're doing things that are contrary to the Most High, when your child comes to you and says, Mom, I think I like, if your young girl comes to you and say, mom, yeah. I think I like girls, or your boy comes to you and says, I think I like boys, then you have to realize that something got in there that shouldn't have been in there. That's right. Or that you didn't pay attention to something that was going on. That's right. When I see um, a mother allowing her little boy to wear little girl's shoes just because he thinks it's fun and nobody thinks it's necessary, the mom or the dad don't think it's necessary to sit that boy down and tell him, look, that is wrong. You do not wear girl shoes. You do not wear, or a girl, you do not wear boys clothes. That's right. When a parent don't think it's necessary to sit their child down and instruct them on things, I mean, even hitting each other. Yeah. If your children are hitting each other, you have to let them know that that's wrong. That's right. I mean, every aspect of their lives, even what they eat. That's right. If you are allowing your children I have to hit this eating thing real quick. If your children are eating junk food all day, every day, and they don't know what a piece of fruit look like because you don't buy fruit, and then you can't understand why they grow up sick. Some of our children are growing up sicker than we were as children. That's right. You know, there's an obesity problem here in America. Those things come from a lack of instruction. You see, of course, the food plays a significant role in that yeah. because they have changed the food structure on us. That's right. They spread with all kinds of chemicals. They put in things in it, high fructose corn syrup. But when you learn these things and you don't take heed and you allow your children to eat junk food all day, all day they're eating sweets. They don't make their own um, um, healthy treats. They don't eat fruit and vegetables. They don't eat um, limited portions of meat. Sometimes you have to scale back on these things. They drink and pop all day. What about the tea? What about the lemonade? What about exactly. water sometimes? You see, when we don't train our children up in every aspect of their lives, every aspect of their life, we are preparing them for failure. That's right. Every, I mean, even with the way That's they right. dress, even with the way they dress, every aspect of our children's lives has to be taught properly. That's right. Are you gonna know something? Just like what my wife is saying, think about this. You have heard it. From time to time, we've all know the cliche, right? Mm -hmm. You are what you eat. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. You are exactly what you eat. That stuff goes into you and it becomes a part of your body. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's why um, you got to train up children to eat a certain way, to every area of their life, to drink a certain way. You understand? Mm -hmm. They can't be afraid of fruit and hate fruit. You know what I mean? They got to love fruit, you know, when they get older and they're growing up. You know, my kids, we didn't got to the point where they know every day they're going to eat some fruit because we try to keep fruit here and we make them eat for lunch. Mm -hmm. Can we have lunch? Yep, get a piece of fruit. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes even for breakfast. Can we have breakfast? Yeah, get a piece of fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we push that thing on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because they got to be trained up in that way. Mm -hmm. I like to use myself as an example when I teach my children and things of yeah. how I grew up, the good and the bad. That's right. I was a kid who grew up going to the penny candy store. Yeah. Okay. Y'all don't know nothing about the penny candy store. They show That's up. where you can take $1 and go get 100 pieces of candy. And yep. I took advantage of that. 
<laughs> and many of my cousins and my siblings did as well, and the children in the neighborhood as well. We would take our $1 and go get 100 pieces of candy. Mm -hmm. And there were no restrictions on how we ate that candy. And as a result, I have some fillings in my teeth, okay? My husband has some fillings in his teeth because I'm sure Mama B allowed him to go to the penny candy yeah. store too, you see? But as a parent now, I don't want my children to do the things that I that I did as That's a youth. Right. You see, um, I was able to uh, do certain things, ride up and down the street, um, going miles away from home on my bike and stuff like that. I don't allow my children to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you see, things that I used to do as a child, I would not allow. I used to climb trees, okay? And I know some. I might lose some of you here, but I've also <laughs> been injured in trees. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and I've also seen other children injured in trees. And so some parents say, let them grow up, let them be kids. Well, there's things that happen that are accidents where children don't always recover. I don't think, think it's necessary for my children to climb 20 feet in the air. I just don't. <laughs> and so therefore, I do not allow it, you see? Yeah. And so you might think I'm being a little too rough there, but that is the way I choose to raise my children. Okay, yeah. not climbing trees, right. but that is one of those things. Um, it's a, that's a, a parental choice right yeah. there. But there are some things that we that we did as children that we should see that is not good for our own kids. And just because we did it, don't say that. Well, I did it and I made it through. Some things we should not allow to pass on to the next generation. That's Staying right. up all night watching TV. That's right. I did that, but we should not allow our children to do that. Yeah. Especially since what was coming on the boob tube back then is totally different than what's coming on now. When I was a young young man. I used to blow my money on video games around right these these video games around the corner at the corner store, and I go there and get get five six dollars just be playing, just be spending that money in them games, you know, mm -hmm. or buying goodies and sitting back eating a whole bunch of goodies, a big giant bag of chips, eating it all in one sitting, you know. When I was young, I used to do things like that, but now my kids, they, we train them different. You know, for instance, uh, we uh, ordered some organic cookies. The kids wanted to buy their own bag of uh, pack of organic cookies, right? Now, and they came yesterday. Yeah, they came yesterday. Guess what? They still got some today. They're gonna have some tomorrow too, because we we said that we no, you ain't gonna sit here and eat no eight to ten cookies in one sitting. You know, get what I'm saying? The pack. You know what the problem is with us? We look at the serving size. We don't even look at the serving size on these packs of things that we buy. And we just look at a can of anything or whatever it is we buy and we eat and we just, that ain't enough. It ain't filling the plate. So, hey, and I, I'm one that can, can talk about it because that's how I gained so much weight over the years because I would sit back and not really realize the serving size. Then you look at the serving size on the pack for the cookies, what, three cookies is the serving size? Maybe two? You get what I'm saying? Two. How many? Two. 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 two cookies. So then now, now a kid comes and says, oh, let me get a cookie. Can I have some cookies? Yeah. And you have them two cookies. He look at your strings. Only two? Yeah, that's really all you should get is two. You get what I'm saying? Why? Because if you eat too much, it's not going to be good for your system. You see, if you're knocking down five, ten cookies a city. So you got to train your kids and how to eat. So that when, they get, when they get older, they ain't gonna go just out their mind, sit back, oh, yeah, I'm gonna sit there and eat a whole pack of cookies, a whole pack of chips, and next thing you know, you are what you eat. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So basically, all of this stuff is very important that you understand where we're going with this whole story. Now, I get a very important story that I want to um, um, talk about here, but I don't wanna get too far because my wife had a couple more examples here, I want you to cover some more of your examples here. Okay. And then we're going to cover some more of these examples. And then I'm going to read this story that I got that's going to come out of the book of Samuel. It's very important, this story. Okay. But go ahead. Talk about oh, some of these. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it was just some more animal allegories, you mm -hmm. know, as it relates to our children. Um, that's a great way to see things because sometimes when you use children as the example, people don't get it. And they'll say, well, what if you have no other choice? Well, if you have no other choice and you look at it like this um, from an animal perspective, then maybe you'll get that you better come up with a choice then, because we are talking about your children yep. and their lives. That's right. We have all seen um, the little African uh, safari videos where you have gazelles 
that are running in the field and you have lions that are chasing them. That's right. Okay, now imagine that your child is a little gazelle and there's a field or a herd or a pride of lions just sitting off in the distance in the direction, in that direction. Yeah. Okay, and so your little gazelle wants to go just beyond where the lions are about a, a mile past where they are, but they have to go past them. And so you, as the mom and the dad of that little gazelle, you tell them, oh, go ahead. It's okay. They're sitting down. The lions are sitting down, so don't worry about them. We all know how the chase goes. <laughs> you go past the lions, they're going to chase you, catch you, and kill you. Yep. Plain and simple, especially if you're a little one, right? But some of us, we send our children right in the direction of those lions. That's right. The scripture tells us to go not in the way of the heathen. Did it not say that? Said it. It says, let wisdom be thy sister and understanding be thy kinswoman, right? That's right. That she may keep you from the strange one. Yeah. So even with our young men, there is a word of wisdom that we have to prepare them with when we send them out. Yeah, that's right. You can't expect that your children are going to know what to do when, um, let's just say for a young man, he goes off in the direction of the lions to Lion University, okay? <laughs> He's going off to college at this Lion University. And he's well suited, very intelligent, very smart, very handsome. But then, but he's a gazelle, you see? He's a gazelle. Yeah. This female lion approaches him and she roars ever so gently, okay? And that young like, man, like a purr. <laughs> yeah, more like a purr. She purrs ever so gently. And this young gazelle is taken back by her until she starts to bite his head off. You see, the scripture said, don't even go in the way That's right. of the heathen. But we do it all the time. Yeah. We go among them, we send our children among them, and we say it ain't no big deal because I taught them well at home. That's right. I don't care how much teaching you put into your children, tell them what not to do when you're being disobedient with the very fact of sending them among the wolves in the first place. That's right. The scripture says, come out from among them and be ye separate. And guess what? The one passage we just read, I forget which one it was, but that don't just mean the heathen. Yeah, that's right. It's also talking about among our own people. That's right. It says if... If this brother or the stranger that um, lives among us sacrifices their children to Molech and you don't rebuke him, it says something else. It says stone him and kill him, right? We ain't stoning the stoning the killer people in these days. But it's like if you agree with them and you still let your children go around these people who are allowing their children to do other things. That's right. Then you yourself are in danger and in error. That's right. Because we're not supposed to allow our children to even deal with other kids, even if they're Israelite children. If these Israelite children are going in the way of the heathen, picking up the heathen's ways, doing the things that the heathen do, we should not allow our children to be around them. Otherwise, we sin in two. That's right. Yeah, you know, it's, it's you know, it, it's, it's so, so um, simple in my, in my opinion. It's really simple. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's almost like, um, like, like putting, like, like, like taking um, an item of some sort, right, covered in tar or some sticky, and you just roll it out in the grass and just think it ain't gonna pick up no stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's gonna pick up some of anything. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on. You know, when we send our kids out in these particular things, you know. But it's important that we raise our kids and we train them up a certain way because the Most High gonna hold us to that. Now I got proof. Yes. I got proof. Yes. Okay. Let's go to this story here. This is um we're gonna talk about Eli for a minute. Let's go to first Samuel. Yes. And this is chapter three, and we're gonna read verse eleven through fourteen. I'm gonna let the boy read it, eleven through fourteen. You say first Samuel. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'll tell you what, I'll let Sophia read. Sophia, you find First Samuel and you're going to read 11, chapter 3, verse 11 through 14. Then I'll let you read the next one in chapter 4. I'm a part of that because it's quite a bit. And Yahweh said to Shemuel, See, I am doing a matter, I am doing a matter in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it shall tingle. And that day I shall confirm against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have declared to him that I am judging his house forever for the wickedness which he knows because his sons cursed Elohim and he did not rebuke them. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. Read 14 also. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the wickedness of the house of Eli shall never be atoned for by slaughtering or grain offering. Now, I hope you heard this. This here is some deep stuff here. Think about what it said here. Now, the most high. See, he's not playing. See, we 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 sending our kids and we letting our kids do all kinds of stuff, and we thinking that oh, well, that's them. God gonna get them. No, he's gonna get you. Mm -hmm. He's coming for you. Yes. Right. And yes. he's gonna get them. Yes. I'll prove it to you. Get that everybody. Yeah, everybody's gonna get it. Now, this is what it says. Is it in that day that I will perform against Eli all the things that I spoke concerning this house? When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knew. In other words, you knew your sons was doing this wickedness. And you continue to just turn the, the deaf ear and the yes. blind eye to it, right? Yes. You see, the most high, he ain't deaf and blind though, right? He said, you knew, right? Because his sons made themselves vow and he restrained them not. So in other words, Eli didn't, didn't, didn't chastise them. He didn't restrain them, right? He allowed them to do what they did, right? And the most I said, because of it, I'm going to read the King James. This is what it said in King James. It said that, um, it says, and therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with by sacrifice nor offering forever. You see the curse this man brought down on his household because he wouldn't chastise his boys? Man, now, I'm going to show you how deep this thing got because it got even deeper, okay? Now, let's go to the next the next one here. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 4, and you can read verse 1 through 10, and I'll read uh, 1 through 9, and I'll read 10 through 18. Okay, and the word of Shemuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistine to battle and pitched beside Eben Hazir. And the Philistine pitched in Apec. And the Philistine put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined, bat joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistine. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. So 4,000 men of Israel got slew right here. Okay, keep going. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore has Yahuwah smitten us today before the Philistine? The Philistines, basically. Okay. Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah out of Shiloh unto us, that when it comes among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, Tashvat, which dwells between the cherubim and the two sons of Eli, Shaphani and Piachnach, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of Elohim. And when the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistine heard the noise of the shout, they said, what mean the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Ivory? The Hebrews. And they understood the Ark of Yahuwah was come into the camp. 
And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, Elohim is come into the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there has not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of this mighty Elohim. These are the Elohim that smote the Mitzrayim with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and be yourselves like men, O ye Philistim, that ye be not servants unto the ivory. And they have, the been, have been to you. Be yourselves like men and fight. Okay. So now, even though the Philistines heard that the ark was there, fear came upon them, they said, we're going to still fight, right? Now let's keep reading this story here. I want you to see what happened here. Because this is deep. We're going to get into the deepness of this here passage. Okay. And the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten. And they fled every man to his own tent. And there was a great, a very great slaughter. For there fell in Israel 30,000 footmen. So from 4,000 to 30,000 footmen were slain. And the ark of Yah was taken, and the two sons of Eli, um, his sons, Hip, Hip, Hip Hop, Hopney, and Pinehas, were slain. So Eli's two boys were slain, right? And there ran a and there ran a man of Benjamin out to the army and came to Shiloh as the same day with his clothes rent and the earth upon his head. And when he came, lo, Eli was set upon a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of Yah. And when the man came unto, into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, what meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told Eli, now Eli was 90 and eight years old. So he is 98 years old, and his eyes were dim so that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army and fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? And and the messenger answered and said, Israel fled before the Philistines, and there had been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons, uh, whatever their names are here, are dead, and the ark of Yah is taken. And it came to pass that when he made mention of the ark of Yah, that he, Eli, fell from off his seat backward on the side of the gate and broke his neck. And his neck broke, and he died. And, the, and there was an old man, for he was an old man and heavy. And he had judged Israel 40 years. Now, now let's get into this story because I want you to hear this, right? And think about what happened here. So now let's look at Israel. Israel now, in their position, the men of war and all the leaders, right? They sitting there ready to go to battle, right? Now, they knew about Eli's two sons also. They knew that these boys were vile, okay? That these boys were wicked. And yet, they said, hey, let's bring the ark. We just lost 4,000 people. Let's bring the ark of the covenant into our midst so that we can get the victory. Okay. See, some of you out there, you're praying, right? And you got sin right in your sight. You get what I'm saying here? You see, that prayer is not going to save you. Having Elohim, Elohim, having Yah in the midst is not going to save you. Because Yah don't like no iniquity. Right. Are you hearing me here? Get it out of the camp. So no, they said, you know what? No, we're going to have uh, Eli's two sons bring the ark. Because the ark, we know we got the ark. Man, we're going to have the victory. Yeah, you got the ark, but you got two sinning priests. The sons of a priest bringing the ark into the mist. This was wickedness. Yes. Yes. You understand me? It was wickedness. But in their eyes, it was righteous. Mm -hmm. You see, the scripture says, don't it say that there's a way to seem of right? Yes. See, they thought it was righteous, right? So when they did this, what did the most I do? He slew 30,000 of them at the hands of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. 30,000? Mm -hmm. 
really common sense though. Sure. If you look at because it's like if you look at what happened, you said four thousand were slain, right? Mm -hmm. That right there should have been their cue to say, "Dang, what's going on?" Yes. Four thousand, because we we usually invincible when we face our enemies. So it's like four thousand of us get killed. Hold up, don't don't touch that art, bro. Yeah, yeah art we doing let's something go wrong. Figure this out right we quick. doing something wrong. Let's pray. Yeah, yo, let's go before the most high find out what we're doing wrong. Uh, instead, yeah. they went. They was all cocky with it and stuff. Like, let's go get that art and stuff. We gonna handle these Philistines. Yeah, we gonna, like, gonna handle them, right. And they got handled. Yeah, yeah they, the most high said, right. let them handle you. And that's you right. Know, those are the same kind of judgments he has sent on us. That's right. Throughout history. Throughout history. When we are out of order, the most high says he's gonna show us his backside. That's right. Ain't he's going to be said? an enemy to us. That's right. You see, that's he's right. going to hide his face from us. That's right. Exactly. So now, when you really look at this story, you look at it, you, it's like, man, you mean to tell me now, because Eli didn't chastise his boys and Israel went along with it too? Woo! Yeah. You better be careful of these leaders, huh? That's you better right. watch your leaders. Yes. Watch your leaders because if they're doing wrong and you going along with it, judgment is going to fall on you too. Yes. You understand what I'm saying here? Yes. This has been our history. Yes. It has always been this way in the scripture. Yes. Yah is not changed. He will not change. His judgments are always the same. He huh? Not Didn't he say, mm -hmm. yeah, God, Yah is not mocked. He's not like a man that he should lie. Mm -hmm. huh? Don't the scriptures say that? Yeah. So we better get it in our minds and understand what's going on here. You better stop being an enabler. huh? You better stop following after all this false stuff because thousands, I guarantee you, thousands of y'all's people are going to perish because judgment is coming. Because right. some of this stuff that's going on in our communities, y'all is sick of it. And that's why he sent the, sent the destroyer huh? Yes. into our communities. Huh? We sending our kids off, and the most I said, "What?" He said, "I'm gonna send a destroyer, and destroyer gonna get a hold of your husbands. He gonna get a hold of your kids. He gonna get a hold of your your wives. This destroyer gonna get a hold of all of them, and he's gonna take them all out. Yeah. Because you don't want to walk according to his word. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do according to righteousness. You see? Now they didn't have a law to go by. They they sitting there. They had one law about about um uh bail and all of that, but it was just is Eli's sons that did wickedness. So they should have known that there was unrighteousness. There was unrighteous to allow these boys to, to carry in the service of Eli. And Eli himself was a slugger. Huh? Eli himself was slowful. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's why the scripture said he was he was overweight and he was blind. That's spiritual. Mm -hmm. The man was overweight and blind. Mm -hmm. He was out of order. Mm -hmm. You understand? So now, what happened? Judgment came, and Eli's sons were killed along with who? All of those that followed with them. All of those that followed with them. You see? Right. So that's what I want y'all to get out of this mess, out of this message. Okay. We got to understand that children are a blessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a scripture I want to read. Children are a blessing. Y'all gave us our children to be a blessing. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, this reminds me of a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine. Okay, I've been knowing this guy from a, oh man, probably since, since I was at least probably about eight years old, and he was probably only about two or three. <laughs> I've been knowing this guy that long, okay? But this guy, he just recently had a child, okay? He had a child, a little boy. And he called me up, this was his first child. And he called me up a week or so ago and he told me, he said, man, you know what? He said, man, I'm having the, the time of my life with my son. Mm -hmm. He said, I never thought having a child would be this nice. He said, I love this. He said, you know what he said to me? He said, man, I can't understand how these men are walking away from their children like they do. He said, this is a joy to me. He said, I can't understand it how so many men have walked away from their children. Don't take care of their children. Don't have nothing to do with them, some of them. Mm -hmm. Now, how does he know that? Huh? You see, some of y'all, y'all have like y'all, some, some people, I'm gonna be honest, I listen to some people and some of the things they say, 
they act like yeah, they in another world because I'm in this world and I'm looking around. I know what I see. Okay. I see a lot of men that have abandoned women with children. A lot of them. I see men with women with 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 with, uh, with children with, with five and six different women. I know men that have five and six different kids by different women and ain't in none of them life hardly. I know these men, grew up with them, okay? Now I'm telling you, I'm telling you here, there's a problem with that. You understand me? We supposed to love our children. Go to um, um, Psalms, I'm gonna have you read this. Psalms 127th chapter, verse three through five. Lo, an inheritance from Yah, our children, a reward, the fruit of the womb, as arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of young men. Now happy is the man who have filled his quiver with them. They will not be ashamed, but will speak with enemies in the gate. Now, <laughs> did y'all hear that? Wasn't that beautiful? You hear what he said about them children? It says that Lo, children are a heritage of Yah. What does yours say there? 127. I'm curious to see what it says in for heritage. 127, verse 3. Lo, children are a heritage. Oh, okay. Of uh, a heritage of Yahuwah. Now, y'all hear that? Huh? You hear that man? You a heritage of Yahuwah. Huh? You hear that Benjamin? Huh? Hannah? Y'all hear that? Y'all are a blessing. Yeah, you a blessing. You hear that? She heard that, y'all. You're a blessing. That's right. Y'all are a blessing. You understand? It says here, um, um, the fruit of the wound is his reward. That's a reward to a man. So these men are taking their reward and casting it aside. That's like a person taking gold. Do you know y'all are more precious than gold That's to mommy right. and daddy? Right. You're more precious than gold to your parents, mm -hmm. right? And some men take their precious gold and just toss it aside. Some women take their precious gold, just toss it aside. They take their precious gold and they send it off to anybody. Here, here, take my gold. And just do whatever you will with it. Bring it back to me later on in the Teach day. Teach it for me. You know? Teach I mean, it for me. I mean, this is, this is precious gold. Yes. You hear that? It says, as arrows that are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of you. Mm -hmm. Happy is the man that have his quiver full of them. Full of what? Children. Kids. Mm -hmm. You know what children are like? It's, it's almost <laughs> like if you buy a brand new state-of-the-art FBI standard computer right mm -hmm. and instead of doing um, profitable things with your FBI standard computer you take your computer and you, you, you use it to search sites that's gonna give you nothing but viruses and all that stuff until your hard drive just give out and stuff <laughs> <laughs> and start smoking exactly. from the back and everything exactly and now you can't even even get it refurbished or anything because your computer is so jacked you can pour kool-aid on it and everything exactly mm -hmm. exactly i want to i think this is a good time for me to enter introduce this subject um, oh, yeah. brother edward Mit mitchell was saying this <clears throat> and we all know when this happened too but um, he was talking about propaganda, how every day is used against us, right? And right. so I thought about the music industry. Parents need to be yeah. wise because our children need to know and understand what propaganda is. Yeah. It's a way of training and manipulating the brain and the mind and shaping your thoughts, everything. And they use all of this media to do just that. And so I thought about uh, the infiltration of rap music. If you remember when rap music first exploded on the scene, yeah. there were so many positive messages Rest going well, forth in rap music. You see, so many positive messages. But the powers that be, they decided we don't need someone who's saying fight the power. Right. Okay. We don't need someone um, talking about respecting your elders. You know, the song Mr. Window. Yeah. He was given respect to the elders in that song. That's see, right. <clears throat> they decided we need to squash this kind of music. And so they started using prop propaganda. They needed a way to destroy us from within because there was just too much love in the black community. Okay, That's we right. had our problems. Yes, we did, just like every other people That's did. Right. 
but for the most part, um, we tried to stick together. We tried to love each other in the face of all kinds of adversity. And so they said, we're going to destroy them from within. Yeah. Uh, we're going to stop all of the beautiful love songs because it's, it's damaging to our project. They're our project. And our project is to destroy them. So as long as the black man is singing love songs to the black woman, we can't accomplish our mission. That's right. As long as these rappers, these young rappers are not acting like thugs and they're singing positive messages about family and they're singing messages about um, fighting against the system and all of this other stuff, then we can't accomplish our mission. That's right. That's and right. so we're going to pay them big money to sing something totally different. That's right. We're going to have them focus on the negative things in the black community, and we're going to blow that up. And so now uh, what you have is a progression of this music, which has gotten worse. And we talked about this many times before. It went from gangster rap, thug rap, and all this other stuff. Now we off into gay rap. Yep. We got all kinds of um, fruity, tooty gay rappers now who are yep. pushing the new agenda. Okay, once they accomplish one mission and they got it all engrafted into us and we've been completely indoctrinated yep. into the selling of drugs, using of drugs, destroying our own families from within. Okay, now we're gonna do it even more. We're gonna stop these black babies from being born. And in order to do that, we're gonna make the men fruity and we're gonna make the women tooty. The women are gonna like the women and the <laughs> men are gonna like the men. And in yep. order to accomplish that, we're gonna use music music yeah. programs you it trains your brain it sure does. so all of this propaganda i mean and right now we're being bombarded with gay 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 they sending people to jail for not giving out gay marriage licenses there's they're uh, finding businesses hundreds of thousands of dollars but not baking cakes for gays i mean you you literally can't do anything to protect the minds of your children if you don't separate them from the system because the system is set up to destroy the family, the family structure, period, you see? And when we don't protect our children against them this by training them up in the way that they should go, we can't expect anything different. That's right. If you're going to send your children to the wolves, don't be surprised when they come back wounded or dead. That's right. Okay. That's right. You see? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I don't know what to say. It is what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. It is what it is. This is how it is. And we, we just got to um become smart to what's going mm -hmm. on like my wife said that music music is dangerous mm -hmm. music is dangerous my goodness music is i mean you need to understand what music does to a people mm -hmm. you know rap has really done more damage to us as a people than good you know and and uh rap and whole because some of it wasn't gangster rap some of them is rapping about lust and all kinds of other stuff you know and it's just a lot of the music has been has it been that positive? You know, I'm gonna just be honest with you. It has not been that positive. And then when you go back to the positive music back in the days, even some of that stuff had some issues. Even the rhythm, rhythm and blues. On. Yeah, even the rhythm, rhythm and blues. blues prepared, prepared the mind for the that's lust. That's right. You I know. know. Yeah. Singing, singing about um, things you shouldn't be singing about. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, a lot of the rhythm and blues, and a lot of that music had some issues. And I'm gonna cover. We got a documentary coming out that's called Satan's um, Musical Prophets. <laughs> Very interesting documentary. We're going to cover some stuff and get to the bottom of some serious um, junk that's going on. But, you know, it's it's just, I tell you, it, it's something else. I got another scripture I want to read, and this is pretty much um, um, the last of it here. Uh, did you have something else you want to cover? Okay. Let's go to Psalms. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let me look and see what the Psalm scripture is real quick here. This is... Uh, Psalms chapter 144, and it looks like I got verse 12 here. It says, that your sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones, polished after the similitude of a palace. Wow. You hear that? That's how our children are supposed to be, how are supposed to reflect. When you go out with your kids, people are supposed to look at your children and say what? That man, they're like lively stones. The daughters are like lively stones. Cornerstones are just so polished like they belong in a palace. You hear that? And the young sons are supposed to be like plants grown up, 
beautiful plants that's grown up ready to bear fruit. That's how your sons are supposed to, uh, supposed to be. You understand? So that's this is how we supposed to raise our kids. This is how they supposed to look. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to touch on something. Uh, you know, a couple of people in the chat uh, making some very good points about things. If we just keep it in our minds that everything in and around our lives is geared to destroy us, I mean, everything yeah. is a suspect. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, brother Yoshia said, even the church music. That's right. Everything is a suspect, y'all. Yeah, everything, church music. That's right. You, we have to be that's discerning. Right. You see, right now, everything in our lives is telling us, "Don't judge. Don't judge." You see, right. don't, don't, don't right. judge. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't do this. Don't say that. You know, that's satanic. If you ask me, that the is. Bible says, "That's, that's right. The tree by the fruit. That's, that's right. right." You got these new cliches going. Don't label. Yeah, right. don't that's label. Right. Don't judge. But what they're really saying to us is, "Don't use discernment." Yeah, they're saying don't use your discernment. I don't want you to to decipher me. Yeah, you see, don't decipher what I'm really up to. What I'm really about. What I'm really about. Yeah. Don't really sniff out my real plan here. That's what don't judge me. You see. That's right. And so when you look at everything as a suspect, you have to question everything, especially when it comes to your children. That's right. I remember when we lived back in Belleville, my oldest daughter. Um, she, she was, I don't know, I think she was walking towards the mailbox, but um, it, on our land, there used to be these certain, this certain breed of birds who would have their eggs yeah. right in the middle of the grass. I don't know why, <laughs> yeah. but they run real fast on the ground or what have you. But yeah. I remember my daughter, she approached this pile of eggs unknowingly. <laughs> and as she got close, out of nowhere, here come mama bird. And here comes my baby running towards the house, screaming and trying to get the birds because they were after her. Uh -huh. They were after her because she treaded too closely to those babies, you see. And that's how we have to become as moms and dads. Yeah. We have to look at our children like we got to protect you from everything. Everything. Like my husband, for instance, sometimes when the children are out there in the garden, he, he can't stand spiders. I don't like them either. But I don't have a particular spider phobia. So my husband is like, be careful because there are some black widows out here. And matter of fact, there's so many, we have come across so many black widows, it ain't funny. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never been on a property. You see all these black widows. It's like I come down here, one that was my phobia for years. I, I'm, I'm better with it. Now I'll kill them. I ain't scared of them to the point I won't go and kill them. I, that, matter of fact, I get aggressive when I see them and I got to kill them. You know? yes. But I've yeah, never yeah. seen so many dogs. And, and we got also the brown recluse here. Both spiders are extremely poisonous, and it seems like we manufacture them on this property for some reason. But the Most High has protected us in our garden. You know, we we keep the garden a certain way now. We keep certain things. We know how where they live and how they do. And so we try to make sure that when the kids are, um, like black willows will typically be in the yard timber. They may be under it or back up in like the dark, shadow dark shadowy place. So they gotta be kind of moist and stuff. Yeah, moist and stuff like that. So usually they're out of the way of them. You know what I'm saying? So and the most have been protecting us as far as that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so but it's it's a trip though. You know, like my wife said, you know, that's one thing that I've I always tell my kids. Put on gloves when y'all out there, you know? Mm -hmm. Put on some socks on your ankles. Don't go out there barefooted or with, with sandals on. Yeah, and exactly. Protecting your feet. But see, that's how we as parents are supposed to do in everything. That's right. You see, whenever we see our children doing something that we know is bad for them, we are not supposed to sit on the sideline and watch the house burn and our children in it. That's right. If the children are playing <laughs> in the middle of the street, say something, do something. That's right. If the children are um, climbing up on top of the roof, do something. If the children are hanging out with people that they're not supposed to hang out with, say something. Put a stop to it. We are not supposed to just sit back and allow our children to um, just fester in, in wrongdoing. And that's what the mistake of Eli was. That's right. As a result, Eli is dead and his children. He had to die and them because the Most High was angry at that and disobedience. And all those people too. And allow, yeah, other people too. You see, and look, look at the black community, for instance. Look at the nine-year-old girl in St. Louis mm -hmm. that was shot in her house. Because you have this group, this is why we're all responsible for each other. And we have to cry aloud and spare not people. That's right. You see, when you have a group of young people over here are running them up and their parents aren't doing anything about it, don't think that because, oh, me and my family, we, we don't hang around people like that. 
we do things the right way. We teach our children, you see, and our children don't get into those kind of things. Well, this young lady was in her house. This little girl was in her house and a bullet found its way in her house because everything outside of her house was running amok. And yeah. this is how we as the children of Israel suffer collectively. Collectively. This is why because of the yeah. sins of Eli's two sons, yeah. more than 30,000 Israelites died. That's right. Because we don't put each other in check. We don't police yeah. ourselves. There are ways that we can rise to the uh, position of being able to police ourselves. There are ways. And I believe if we started one by one, family by family, um, example by example, starting to fix what we can do in our own neighborhood, on our own block, in our own families, it will catch on. But when you have everybody in the hood up to no good, this is why <laughs> we can't. Like a this is why we can't do anything. Yeah. We can't police ourselves. And so um, you have, have little girls getting shot and killed. Yeah. You have um, high speed chases through the hood and cars slamming into little kids on the streets of Detroit because yeah. nobody is putting anybody in check. Yeah. And so as long as we continue to sleep, sleepwalk as a people, and as long as we live in our little cluster and we want to protect our little family only, don't think that your family is protected. Because the Most High has a way of letting Israel's sin spill off into somebody else's domain. Yeah. You see, other Israelites will suffer because of what this one does. When we don't cry aloud and spare not, when we don't put our sins in check, when we don't raise our children properly, you'll have another Israelite child come into your house, bring their demons and deposit them around. Next thing you know, everybody got demons. Yeah. So we, got, we have a lot of work to do. And it yeah. just seemed like we're just going in this this vicious circle, That's right. this vicious circle of turmoil, and we can't break free. That's because we don't understand the power of the word That's right. and of togetherness. We don't understand what it means to be on one accord. Scripture says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? That's right. That's why we can't do anything. We are a house divided against itself, and that's why we are not standing. That's right. But, you know, it's it's sad when you look at um, all of this, you know, we are house divided against each other, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, you know, yet um, uh, um, the, the, the kids are uh, against the parents, you that's know, right. and mm -hmm. it's just so much of that stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 a shame. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things we did when we were raising our kids, we we said, well, wait a minute, you know, we started teaching our kids a certain way so that. When they got around other kids, when other kids came around here, they began to notice that these kids had issues. Yes. And our kids would start to back up from them, be like, whoa, wait a minute, mommy, daddy, demon alert, demon alert, you know, demon, you know, and we would see it right away, you know, in some of the kids, you know. And of course, they wouldn't say it like that. <laughs> they, what would happen is, a good example is there was a little girl um, who was, you know, beside herself, had a little boyfriend, she's five years old. Um, and she was um, asking one of my kids, um, if you don't do this, that, or the other, I'm not going to be your friend. And then my daughter said, well, I guess we won't be friends then. <laughs> That's how our children yeah. would handle things because they understood uh, what was proper and what was improper. And yeah. I love it when I see our chil my children, like Rebecca, for instance. Sometimes she'd be on these little ones like white on rice. <laughs> and I said, I guarantee when, Re when Rebecca gets married, her kids ain't gonna get away with nothing. Yep. Nothing. You see, um, even though we even are married, liar be on them, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, even a liar, he's on them a lot. But Rebecca be on them like white on rice. I'm talking yeah. about every it's little thing. Yeah. And, and sometimes they get confused. Let me tell you how how good she is with this little thing. <laughs> it's funny. I it's might funny. give them something to do, and they'll say, "Mommy, Rebecca told us to such and such," you know. And I gotta say, you gotta remember, I'm the I'm the mommy, okay? <laughs> you can do what Rebecca said as soon as you finish with what I just told you. But that's how much um, respect they have for what Rebecca tells them because Rebecca is falling in line with how she wants her household to run at a very young age. How old is Rebecca? Rebecca's 13. 13 years old. You hear she me? be on them like right <laughs> on right. And we talking about, and our other kids that are, uh, how old is Hannah? 10. 10, Shim is what? Nine, mm -hmm. Benjamin is seven, you know. He's, he's eight. He's eight, and then we got Grace and all of the other little ones. 
Let me tell you something. They they like uh Becker's like, like the second mama in the house. They be like, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, like, like, I tell one of them to do something, I'll be like, hey, you gotta go handle this. But Becca's, I'd be like, oh, what do you mean, Becca? I said. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Becca said so. Becca is yes, our little Becca. police officer. We yeah. call her the little police around here, and, and I love it. I love it. That's her yeah. mom. I love it. Yeah, Becca um, PD. <laughs> yeah. But Becca PD. Yeah. Becca PD. I love it. As a mom, I love it. So many of our children have many attributes of us. A lot of um, I see a lot of Sophia. I, I see a lot of myself in Sophia. A lot of myself in Rebecca. Various ways that they uh-huh. have. You know, so Sophia is a very uh, she's the kind of girl that she's very quiet and subtle minded, but if you push the wrong buttons too long, a different girl shows up and she wants you to back off. Mm-hmm. You see, and she's very, very wise. That's why her papa named her Sophia Sinesis, because it means wis- wisdom and understanding. That's right. And she's a very wise child, has been for a very long time, you see. And so I thank the most high that when I look at my children, I see so many different ways of ourselves in them. Even with, with our sons, I see a lot of um, Papa in them, you see. And so when you train up children in the way that they should go, That's right. you will begin to see yourself in them. That's right. You see. And uh, there are certain aspects that they have to grow into, of course. Um, but that goes with that education thing I said. Education is a process, you That's see. Right. Um, even though we call it home school, <laughs> I remember a sister told me years ago, she said, I like, I like the term home educator better. And I agree with her. Home education is better because education is a lot more involved than schooling. Schooling is an institutional thing, right. you see, where you, you'll teach them something, you'll teach them math, reading, writing, arithmetic, but some things can be lost, you see. Right. But I thank the most high for education because it is a process. There are things that I'm learning from my children even. You should be able, your children should get to the point to where you can learn something from them. That's right. And I learned something, so many things from my children. And I thank the Most High because in the environment that we've created, we all grow together. We That's all right. learn together. Even when we came into this truth, there were things that our son would research in the scripture and he would come and tell us and we would be like, wow. Yeah. Wow. So we, have, we all have a lot to learn and we all have a lot to teach. Each one teach one. I see that saying being passed around a lot. That's right. All of us should be in a teaching stage That's and right. in a learning stage That's constantly. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you, it's, it's 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 a lot to it. You know what I mean? It's really a lot to it. But I, I guarantee you, it's not that hard though to deal with your own children, teach your own children. It's not that I've heard so many people. Let me tell you something. Because we were forced into it, we were kind of just forced. Because it's like we got to do something. And because of that, it's like I look back and I say, man, I'm glad we were forced into it because when you're not forced into it, you think you got to do all this stuff, man. I got to get this ready. I got to call, get these people on the phone. I got to uh, find this out. And I got to go and get this from this place. And then you get all this stuff mixed up in your head. But when you ain't got a choice, you just simply, uh, let me get started with something. Like, come here, boy, you know, with a pencil and paper, you know, and you just get started. And before you know it, you're bringing other things into it. And it just all works out with ease, I you want, know? I want to mention Ben Carson, although he's not one of our favorite people right now because of his, uh, <laughs> his thinking. But I just want to mention how his mom did things. His mom, um, she wasn't too smart in, in terms of academics. But she was smart enough to know, even though I can't teach my children, she said, um, go get a book, boy, go read, you know? Just go read something. You know, she was constantly telling them to go read. Even though she herself wasn't able to teach them a whole lot, she told them, go pick up a book, go read, go do something, you know? That's right. She didn't tell them, go go watch a movie, That's you know? Right. Go go watch the TV, go do this. Go. She told them to go read, yeah. you see? And so when you, when you uh, put it in your mind that your children are going to get something from learning, it doesn't matter whether you have the skill to teach them everything or not. What you're going to do is seek out a way. Seek out a way. You, you can know, buy you can, books. There's yes. certain books you can buy. You can give them a certain book, and they'll learn everything about that book just by reading that book. There are answers and questions in some books, like geology. You know, there are books on geology that you can get your kids, and they'll learn everything they got to do with maps and their country and all of that stuff. They'll learn all of that stuff. There are books you can get kids on this and on that. My son was doing psychology. What grade were you in when you started doing psychology? Um, I was in 
sure, probably the ninth grade. Ninth grade, he was doing psychology, this, this college level psychology books. Well, how old were you when you were doing physics? Not sure, I was probably like 12 or 13. 12 or 13, he was doing physics. What about meteorology? Remember when you were a little meteorologist? <laughs> How old were you? <laughs> At least kids, like me... six years old. Yeah. You were going to um, Rick Elementary, was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, then I was nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and so let me tell you something. If you get the books for the kids, buy these things for the kids, and just tell, hey, no, hey, I'm going to tell you right now. TV teach kids too. Yes, it does. Turn yes. the cable TV off. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it. You don't need it either. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Get that stuff out of your home. Make cable them read. TV. Make them sit back and read. And you too. You can sit back and read too. There's a lot of different books of the Bible and scriptures and apocrypha. You can read too. And I'm going to tell you something. Get that stuff out of your home. Make them kids read. You'll sit back and those kids will be so into reading after a while. They won't even want to watch anything. They're going to sit back and read a book, you know? So that's what you do. Let let watching something be a treat every every now and then, not every day. Let them play day. an instrument or something yeah. like that. Let them draw. Let them do something a lot more productive exactly. than being indoctrinated by the movie yeah. or the television or even music. Some kids yeah. sit up with headphones on all day just being programmed with music. You see, exactly. and when they don't have the headphones on, they they're into the television. That's right. You gotta know that that is not healthy for your children. You gotta. Nobody know really needs to tell you that when you see how they their language changes and that's right. How they're not able to retain good things. You know, we were having a conversation yesterday. We already fighting the the food, the water, the air. That's right. All of this stuff. We're already in a battle with that. And I told my children. I said, um, even me, I forget. And I said, my mind doesn't seem to be as sharp as it was when we lived in Michigan, you know? And I said, they are doing something to us. I said, but this is how I want us all to be in this house. There was a movie called The Forgotten. Yeah, is the it Forgotten, called Forgotten? Yeah. Where they were trying to make this woman forget that she had a son named Sam. Aliens were. They were trying to make her forget that this child was ever born. And she would get these shutter clicks and uh, visions and imaginations of this kid. And she kept asking everybody. She's like, wait a minute, I have a son. And everybody, everybody around her was in on it. And they was like, nope, you don't have a son. No, no, you don't have a son. You never had a son named Sam. I can prove it to you. And her whole mission was to never forget her son and always try to hold on to every thought that she could until she finally came into the realization my son was real. These people were trying to brainwash me and try to control my mind into thinking he never existed. That's right. And so I told my children, as much as you can, fight to keep your scruples about you. Yeah. Fight. Really try your best to remember because there are things around us, in our environment, in the air, in the food, in the water, that's trying to take away our ability to think. Right. And so we have to fight like crazy to hold on to our thoughts. That's Sometimes right. if you have to retrace your steps to recapture a thought, do that. I've had to go either upstairs or downstairs where my thought originated just to try to recapture it. Because things are, things are trying to bombard us from every direction. So this is a real spiritual battle we're in. That's right. Okay? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and principalities and, and um, all kinds of forces of darkness everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. And they're in high places coming from every angle. They done made their way into every household. Yeah, coming from, you know, she said, coming from every angle, television, music, everything. Food, Anything you water. have, food, water, books. You better read the right books. Don't do you read any books. Mm -hmm. But it's coming from everywhere. So yes. we got to be aware of that and understand that, you know, we're in the land of our captivity. And they're the ones we get everything from the the, 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 the people that's, that's ruling our captivity. Yeah. So we got to try to break off from as much of that as we can. Some of it we can't help it, mm -hmm. you know. But hey, we can break off from some of this stuff, though. Yes, we can. But anyway, I hope this lesson blessed everyone. You know, I hope you could receive it and understand where we're coming from on things. You know, um, it's, it's truly a blessing to be able to come before you like this. I think the Most High for giving us this opportunity to bring the word to his people, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a call and like it's a blessing, you know? Yes. And I just pray that the Most High will bless those that hear, that the hearts can receive it, you know, and that it bring forth fruit. And just like we tell you on every lesson that we do and everything that you receive from Yah, 
period, whether it be through us or anywhere else, meditate. Yes. Meditate on it. Don't just leave from this broadcast and then that's it. Meditate on the things that you've heard. That's Go right. back and read some of the scriptures. Let the Most High open your mind. Put this down in your heart. Let him keep and keep meditating until it gets um, down into your heart to where it's hidden, to where Satan can't come and take it. Scripture tells you he can come and take it, right? Mm -hmm. Get to the point to where it manifests itself, it digests to the point it becomes a part of your inner being, yourself, part of your flesh here. Mm -hmm. Okay? So on that note, we're going to tell you all, like we, we always tell you, you, we love you. <laughs> Don't you know that? Uh, we love you. Okay? Yes, we do, family. And we enjoy it. I, I can't wait to the... Um, to the event so that we get a chance to meet some of you all in person and fellowship and have a good time. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. So on that note, we want to say shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>